Good evening. My name is Nathaniel Osgood. I serve as director of the Computational Epidemiology and Public Health Informatics Lab here at the University of Saskatchewan. But I also speak with you this evening from the position of service to our healthcare system. Uh, specifically, uh, I've been uh, seconded, borrowed as it were, to, uh, to serve our Ministry of Health on the one hand and our health authority on the other. Um, as co-lead of our COVID-19 analytics work to help the province confront the foremost challenge of COVID-19. Uh, within today's presentation, I'm hoping to share with you some elements of that work and provide a bit of a glimpse of some of the, um, the ways in which it's informed our decision making. Um, so I'll be describing today uh, our work using dynamic models and particularly hybrid dynamic models to inform uh, COVID-19 strategic, operational, and indeed tactical decision-making uh, for our province, noting that it also is informing work across Canada and indeed across the world. Uh, I need to begin this work with some acknowledgements. Um, uh, first and foremost, to members of my lab, the Computational Epidemiology Public Health Informatics Lab, who have make this work possible, including many of the trainees that you see here. Um, I also need to provide my most sincere thanks to our Ministry of Health and Health Authority uh, of our province, um, as well as to other sponsors I'll, I'll mention uh, later uh, for making this work possible. And I wanna single out uh, my co-lead in this work, Dr. Jenny Bazran, the Senior Information Officer of the uh, Saskatchewan Health Authority for her tireless work in uh, making sure that the modeling is resourced and provided with the opportunities to realize its potential. Um, this is work that reports at the lovely level of associate deputy ministers and uh, VPs um, uh, for prioritization. Uh, the, my secondment was initiated in March 2020 with the end date to be determined. Um, and the very embedding of this work within the healthcare system helps ensure that um, uh, that even very sensitive daily data can be uh, provided in a timely fashion to the models in ways that allow them to turn around and, and offer um, uh, substantive uh, value to the, uh, to the decision makers and indeed in many cases to the communities affected. This work does involve daily reporting of, of key quantities um, from the effective reproductive number to undiagnosed infectives and others as well as diverse analytic uh, deliverables, which are, are defined more on an as-needed basis, ad hoc basis by our various stakeholders. And uh, the work has informed uh, everything from capacity planning to outbreak response to issues have to do with planning resources such as human resources and PPEs, preventive measures, reopening and tightening strategies, and messaging and communication. Uh, while the work is uh, thoroughly devoted, first and foremost, to the needs of our province, and I came to this work having departed my, uh, my uh, sabbatical posting at uh, Harvard School of Public Health uh, to serve our province in this regard, uh, we do um, uh, additionally provide guidance to a wide variety of other parties with various types of modeling um, color-coded here uh, within um, that slide. Uh, the work, uh, the dynamic modeling work, takes place as part of a broader milieu of a variety of, of uh, different techniques. These include uh, uh, the hybrid dynamic modeling, but also machine learning and, and computational statistics and social media analysis um, uh, conducted, for example, on our province wide Twitter data. Um, uh, very important for understanding public discourse and attitudes and and shifts in belief, um, which have su played such an important play a role in other jurisdictions such as the states and indeed uh, worldwide. Um, in addition, um, we're anticipating some very exciting work going forward with um, lines of work from our smartphone-based data collection platform, the Ethica Data Platform, um, which we've used in many other studies for infectious disease to inform understanding of changes in human behavior over time. Um, four forms of, of modeling have been applied here, three dynamic, uh, one uh, additionally machine learning or computational statistics. Um, within the uh, dynamic modeling space, there are four major um, uh, approaches uh, applied. Um, 
Some of them played a role early on, but have been largely um, uh, um, more abundant. Uh, others continue, and I'm going to be concentrating on, on three of them here. The first of which um, is an agent-based uh, discrete event model, uh, which uh, is designed to inform um, inter uh, understanding of intervention trade-offs in empirically rich fashion. So this work combines agent-based modeling with discrete event simulation at an individual level. Um, we have a, uh, here a, a GIS-enabled uh, ABM, which has been successively used for a variety of different uh, locales um, for a contextualized nimble modeling, a contextualized agile modeling. Uh, for urban regions such as uh, our, our city of Saskatoon, as well as through for a remote and rural regions such as uh, La Loche Clearwater River, uh, the latter being a First Nations reserve in our north and the former being a Métis Indigenous community. Um, at, at uh, far removed from, from urban centers. Um, the model goal here is to, to help inform an understanding of the relative magnitude, timing, uh, and resource demands associated with different intervention portfolios, taking into account the, the unique vulnerabilities associated with different subpopulations. And, and these subpopulations play a large role in prioritizing um, uh, past and ongoing modeling work whether it's uh, those with mental health and addictions challenges, such as those suffering the dual um, uh, epidemics associated with the COVID pandemic, as well as the, um, the opioid epidemic, or whether it's our indigenous communities or seniors, for example, those in long-term care facilities, um, rural or remote areas, healthcare workers, and others. Um, uh, highly vulnerable groups that require textured modeling to really adequately uh, resource their protection and contain the virus um, in a way that doesn't um, reach them or, or minimizes that. There's a variety of agent types other than person, including um, many of more of an institutional nature that play a key role in providing the sort of guidance our stakeholders need. Population mixing takes place in a variety of venues, not just general community, but also classic areas like schools, houses, workplaces, uh, long-term care facilities, acute care, community-based cohorting facilities, and more specialized ones such as homeless shelter that factor into that vulnerability. Um, for particular communities, we've adapted it to a great deal of community context, whether it's uh, the homeless shelters involved, the particular sizes of the, the home care communities, the demographics, um, the, the sizes and compositions of the schools, et cetera. Much of the use of this modeling has been contextualized to capture um, the particular uh, texture and, um, and indeed the particular constraints and opportunities um, such as normalize associated with different communities. And this includes some things that are often ignored such as medical taxi use that uh, affect the lives of those of, of greatest vulnerability. Um, the model is designed to allow us to look at portfolios of very fine-grained public health interventions. Uh, public health interventions, which would be really um, uh, extremely awkward or in many cases quite infeasible to reasonably examine with, uh, for example, an aggregate model. Whether it's uh, specific rules in, in involving community cohorting um, or factors involving contact tracing, door-to-door -door screening, um, particular school-based measures, uh, measures that depend on an individual's history associated with, with screening, for example, um, uh, different rollback strategies, PPE use, et cetera. There's a variety of, of, of textured issues that um, take advantage of the, the, the model resolution at an individual level. Um, uh, hospital flows are represented here at the acute care level, contact tracing, lab testing, and healthcare elements uh, are captured with respect to uh, a variety of issues, both at the acute care setting, such as PPE use, um, uh, those associated with visitors um, uh, and healthcare worker infections, as well as in the long-term care context. And uh, we've built using this model um, uh, scenarios to look at a variety of context-specific needs. Um, uh, that, that address needs of particular communities. The model, as would be expected for an agent-based model, outputs um, 
um, uh, from uh, ensembles of realizations, many, many runs of the model, uh, reflecting the, the fact that we're dealing with, in many cases, chance events. We're living in the reopening context, uh, which we're well into now for the province, it's kind of a nice edge, and um, uh, some realizations uh, through happenstance are hard hit, others much less so, and the goal, as always, is to reduce vulnerabilities um, to those um, to those chance events, for example. And so uh, we, we spend a lot of time looking not only at means and medians, but also uh, variability. Um, we've also used a model like this to, to examine uh, dozens, a trade-off between dozens of scenarios. I should emphasize these results are illustrative only. I've taken pains here um, uh, on account of confidentiality concerns to not show results that are directly reflective of existing model uh, findings. Um, but using these approaches, we can, uh, we can help inform communities with respect to trade-offs between policies and, and guide them on a community-by-community community specific basis for how their particular demographics, their particular resource uh, situation um, might lead to trade-offs between interventions. Um, and there have been a many points of learning involving this um, from the process side to uh, healthcare findings. Um, uh, but uh, we found in general the models uh, really excellent matches to the nimbleness of the communities with which we're dealing and to dealing with their particular constraints, priorities, and needs um, uh, in order to, to inform their decision making. Oft this has uh, translated into um, uh, knowledge translation opportunities and uh, communication to community members in ways that I understand to have been very instrumental in motivating community action along certain lines. This work um, uh, needs to acknowledge first and foremost Wade McDonald, uh, shown here with a, a special halo around his head. Uh, Kurt Kruger has also been particularly active in the Australian context uh, evolving this model and, and um, it will be increasingly important within the Saskatchewan context for this particular model. But a variety of others from Young Chin and Winchell to uh, Alex Dumay and Bryce Keeler have often um, have also been uh, very very instrumental. I want to cite uh, Winchell Chen for his uh, extraordinary leadership early on with another agent-based model together with Young Chen. A second line of work involves adaptive modeling. This work, in contrast to the previous, involves combinations of stock and flow models and machine learning models. Um, and uh, this used to a vision long articulated uh, and long as ascribed to in our group of quickly formulated models that can then be frequently regrounded with ongoing data, um, that can be kept current with the latest evidence, recognizing that both that life evidence and the model expectations are highly fallible. Um, but we can use the model at any one point to incorporate what's known till now and look forward from, from there. Uh, and use the model to understand aspects of the latent state of the system, which otherwise wouldn't be possible. The goal here is to avoid open loop models, instead to take the blindfold off our models and inform them, much as um, we would never rely on even the world's best uh, weather model for tomorrow's data if that weather model had last uh, encountered data as of uh, July 1st. Instead, we, we rely upon that model constantly being refreshed with an understanding of, of what's indeed happened. And that's exactly what's going on here through the powerful techniques of computational statistics machine learning as represented by sequential Monte Carlo methods. So here we have a model which learns over time from data uh, to the present. Um, uh, this data is a variety, variety of sorts, cases stratified by travel status, uh, persons tested and persons testing positive, uh, deaths, hospitalizations, and ICU use, the latter two being uh, the latter three being uh, notably uh, lagged, but uh, still in a way that the model fully uh, accounts for that lag, still very powerful by providing some, some sort of less fungible methods associated with the underlying burden of infection. Projecting forward, uh, a model like this can be very powerful since it's regrounded by that latest evidence. 
Over the years, we've used various techniques for this. The tool of choice we're applying today here is in particle filtering. And this is a technique far more general than much more powerful, much better suited to nonlinear models than MLE techniques represented in common filtering, and much better match, a sort of impedance match to the speed with which we get public health data um, and scalable for even, say, agent-based models. Um, uh, we've applied this in a wide variety of other contexts, including many led by the same students who led this work, such as Li Xiaoyan. Um, the model is a, a stochastic model. It, um, it is corrected um, with observation, uh, observed data. Between those points, though, it runs with, a, as it were, an ensemble of different uh, samples from the model. Um, each sample is represented by particle. It's a weighted quantity. A weight of two indicates it's present in the underlying distribution twice as much as what with a weight of one. And it, it exploits the principle of important sampling. So there are these different particles that, as it were, represent different competing hypotheses as to the underlying state. And there's a survival of the fittest of these particles. As new data is encountered, these particles are tested in this crucible of evidence. Those that are most consistent with that data survive are fruitful and multiply, those that are less consistent die out. So there's this survival of the fittest by which these jockey for position and the model learns through the shaping of that ensemble of particles. Um, our particle filter models are based on our earlier now discontinued compartmental or system dynamics models for, um, for COVID-19. Uh, and we've used them at a wide variety of jurisdictions, a wide variety of different levels. Um, some notable features are separating travel from non-travel cases of, of great importance in the Canadian context because of low burdens involved compared to something like uh, the uh, dumpster fire in the U.S. Um, we have uh, data of a wide variety of sorts that's read in daily, and test data plays a particularly central role in interpreting um, the, the observations. Um, so, for example, uh, an es rapidly escalating number of cases um, is interpreted differently if you have an equally escalating number of tests versus if the test curve is if the test volume curve is flat. Uh, hospitalizations also play an important role here, and we do estimate certain dynamic parameters. The model is both a frankly symptomatic pathway as well as, as well as an oligosymptomatic or pussy symptomatic pathway. And we distinguish between undiagnosed and diagnosed individuals and different levels of, of acute care need within a hospital for COVID-19 patients. A model like this allows us to estimate quantities such as the effective reproductive number over time, the number of undiagnosed individuals over the time, in both cases as part of joint distributions over the entire model state in a very powerful way. Um, the t role of test data here is foundational, nuanced, and takes into account the reciprocal nature interacting with epidemiological changes and testing with, with um, causal linkages both ways. Takes into account differently passive case finding in both its elective and obligatory fashion, obligatory driven by complications, as well as active case finding uh, through contact tracing and mass testing. Um, uh, we, this is a Bayesian approach. We make use of likelihood functions to characterize for a given particle the likelihood that the state posited this hypothesis gained by this particle explains the ob observation vector at a given time. And one of the more powerful things this allows, um, this general approach, is backcasting, estimating what was going on earlier in light of later dynamics. For example, estimating what was the basic reproductive number at the very start based on the, on the set of evidence since then in a way that's much more than kind of a cross-sectional estimation of quantities. This sort of model can be used for population tomography, providing a sort of joint distribution consensus portrait of the underlying situation now. It can project forward and you can use it to ask what if questions. I want to particularly cite the tremendous leadership of uh, Lu Jie Zhuan for his uh, remarkable work with the uh, processing pipeline, uh, automatic reporting uh, for our stakeholders and um, 
remarkably uh, convenient ways of ingesting data and, um, and reporting it. Um, and also his foundational work in accelerating these techniques through uh, techniques such as uh, GPU-based processing. I also need to cite the, um, the remarkable leadership of Li Xiaoyan for her um, high-level uh, driving forward of this particle filtering work and the work that builds so much on her work with other infectious diseases such as pertussis, measles, and together with Lu uh, uh, chickenpox. Finally, I need to uh, just give a nod to a third type of hybrid modeling that combines all three types of dynamic modeling here. Um, it's a, um, a model that uh, captures transmission dynamics in a compartmental fashion, um, but is designed to allow the acute care workflow and resource allocation to be captured in a more textured way. Uh, and uh, it is a risk factor structured model that for the first time uh, for our models captured um, the impacts of chronic diseases and smoking. Uh, individuals in this model start life as a number in a stock, uh, uh, are, are simply um, in an aggregate model. At some point in reaching a point in the risk continuum, for example, infection, they become an agent, they're lent to face upon in the world and they're introduced into service delivery pathways. Um, which can total up resource use in a much better way, take into account heterogeneity, and also support uh, in, in important ways um, aspects of their clinical, um, clinical journey in ways to be more detailed than what we could support through aggregate modeling. And this takes into account key risk factors, including smoking, chronic disease, age, and sex, that play such an important role in shaping regional disparities and reflecting local local demographics. Um, the leadership here is none other than that for PhD student Yuan Tian, who for many years has led many successful modeling efforts for our Ministry of Health. So all this modeling work, how do we end up doing? Well, um, the modeling work was extremely instrumental in precipitating government action with modeling findings being followed in many cases within hours by uh, successive tightening of measures that allowed us to achieve far lower burden, this is a log axis in the Y area, than, than other provinces such as hard hit Quebec or Ontario or our next door neighbor Alberta. Um, and it puts us at par with British Columbia, which early on had much higher adherence to mask use, for example. Saskatchewan can hold its place, uh, hold its head high in the firmament of Canadian success against COVID-19, particularly uh, when viewed on the international stage, comparing favorably to many other countries. Um, diverse types of hybrid modeling, such as those shown here, offer great value for planning for, preventing and controlling uh, COVID-19. Different models here are built for different purposes. Uh, as my colleague Jeff McDonald says, horses for courses. Uh, but interweaving different um, combinations, modeling methods, a lot for models that are at once transparent, responsive to stakeholder needs, performant, for example, supporting the vast majority of the population to be represented in an aggregate fashion until a level of the risk continuum, they reach a level in the risk continuum. Scalable, uh, effective in addressing needs and indeed nimble um, with, the, uh, with the hybrid character allowing the boundary between one modeling technique and another to be shifted as learning in the modeling project continues based on stakeholder feedback, new data availability, uh, et cetera. And these methods are synergistic with large-scale data collections such as that we routinely undertake um, with our COVID, uh, COVID work on uh, social media mining, as well as in, in so many other spheres where the work from smartphone-based data collection, um, which is anticipated to soon yield great insights within this work as well. Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate your patience and accommodation for me going over, and I look forward to answering questions within the panel session. I'm grateful for your attention.